People say that episode 100 should be really cool, something really different, something that you never even thought you would be doing. Well, to me, it's just another episode, but it will be the greatest episode of all time, at least the top five. Welcome to the Licensed to Live show, where professionals, doctors, champions, VIPs, attorneys, and those in public office discover strategies that help you restart and gain what is lost when you find yourself accused. If another has doubted your integrity, questioned your credentials, or caused your actions to come under scrutiny, you are in the right place. On the other hand, if you have never felt the knot in the pit of your stomach when legal papers are served, the heartbreak of disappointing your family when the lock clicks shut on handcuffs, or had to appear before a board of review, then be aware, the longer you serve, the more likely you are to find yourself under the microscope of those who judge. Prepare yourself for this uncomfortable possibility. Now, here's your host, Dr. Jarrett Patton. Welcome to episode 100 of License to Live. My name is Dr. Jared Patton, and I'm your host for our journey together today and every day you choose to listen to this show. If you or anyone you know has been dissed in their career, please invite them to join us along this journey. Just go to anywhere you listen to podcasts and subscribe. And while you're there, rate this episode, which I already said may be the greatest of all time at least top five, and give me honest feedback so I make sure that I'm giving you exactly what you want to hear. By now, you guys know what I mean when I say dissed. I mean displaced. Like, I can't believe I was let go after I worked so hard for this place. Disgruntled, disenfranchised. If you've been dissed, it is important. And today, we're going to be looking at the top episodes of 2021 and why they were special and we will get right into the media discussion right after we finish thanking our sponsors. Hey, this is Dr. Jarrett Patton. Do you need more positivity in your life? No matter what part of your life you want to transform, positive affirmations can help you achieve your goals. But sometimes making permanent changes can be difficult. Designed with you in mind, License to Live, daily affirmations to rebuild your life will inspire and equip you to become the best version of yourself. License to Live, daily affirmations to rebuild your life will set you on the path to changing your mindset, beliefs, speech, and ultimately your actions. You can change your life now by getting your copy at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, your finer book retails, or LicensedToLive.com. That's LicensedToLive.com. This is Super Bowl champion Mike Logan, and you are listening to License to Live. Today's affirmation, I deserve abundance and prosperity. I deserve abundance and prosperity. Sit with that because you do. It's a new year. It's time for you to bring some things up. You deserve abundance and prosperity. Say that to yourself until you believe it. And if you want to get 30 free affirmations from me, click the link in the show notes. You guys know License to Live Daily Affirmations to Rebuild Your Life is available anywhere you get books. So make sure you are checking those out and bringing positivity affirmations and intention into what you are doing in 2022. All right. This year we are doing the top five episodes of, well, we'll give a couple of all time, uh, but mainly we're going to do top two, top five episodes of 2021. And we are changing the metrics a little bit. We've gotten a little bit more sophisticated in the way we can keep our metrics and in order to get all of those episodes from the end of 2020, all the way through the end of 
November 2021, those are the episodes that are being counted. And we're not going as we have typically done in years past by number of total downloads, we're actually working based on the 30 day download. So every episode has its 30 days to produce. And as a result, we came up with some great episodes that I think you will enjoy. And if you hang on to this top five, we will get to some of the greatest of all time. You guys, I know are thinking about that. Uh, And well, that's what'll make this episode. So we will start with episode number five on this list. Well, it ended up being a tie for number four. So there were two number fours in the top five. Well, you guys can figure that out as we go. But the first one is redefining your career. And this is something, one of the main themes that we talk about on this show about redefining your career and why you need to be doing the things that will put you in the position to be further influenced, further credibility, regaining confidence, all the things that we do in our License to Live programming, and really inventing something that works for you. In fact, take a listen to this. The process lingered on for months. I thought my license might never come back. I knew it was time to change my career path, so I didn't exclude any type of work in my list of options. I even spent days at the Department of Motor Vehicles talking with people and eventually taking and passing the written test for the commercial driver's license. I always had dreamed of being a truck driver. So getting a CDL was no big stretch for me. Now, of course, my wife, she truly despised that decision, but that's a whole nother story. But as a physician, you have many career options. There's work in the insurance sector, speaking circuit, locum tenens, education, consulting, you name it. You can create any type of career, whether you use your degree or not. If you open your mind to gaining a different type of career, believe it or not, many physicians go through the entire process of medical school, residency, and fellowship only to discover they don't want to be a doctor. Instead, they want to be an event planner, a travel consultant, a DJ, or any number of things under the sun. However, for some, it's a true calling to be a physician. And if your only calling is to serve people through your practice of medicine, you can still move on and practice in different ways. Initially, I didn't know what I wanted to do. However, I knew I had a tremendous amount of interest in several areas, including administration, leadership, consulting, health equity, and of course, pediatrics. So I went to the internet to do my research, and that's when I started my LLC, really just to get myself going. I started opening social media accounts and repurposed some old articles that I wrote to start my blog. Yeah, I used some techniques to start a website and and got it running. And in fact, I'll have to uh, put some of the promo out for this episode. I will have to give you some screenshots in my first website that I built myself. I was very proud of it, uh, but it was just horrible. And and as I was trying to go to conferences and meet people and gain business through my brand new LLC, I was wondering why people were never calling me back. We had great conversations. Things were going well. And then it's like, uh, oh, yeah, that website, as proud as I was of it, it was horrible. So I'll try to put some pictures in and and actually I'll see if I can load up a bonus content pick uh, in the background so you guys can really check that out and see what my homepage look like. Now, I will try to get that picture up for you guys, but you don't need to see a horrible website. You've seen horrible websites all this time, but episode 83, which is tied for four, redefining your career as a doctor, nurse, physician or executive is really telling some of my story and how did I start to redefine my career and get to where I am today, being able to talk to you through this podcast and serve many doctors and executives in their career change today. So in this tie for fourth also comes one of our more recent episodes, episode number 91. Do you really want to fall on that sword? 
So if you're sitting on the sidelines right now and you're listening to this top five episode, episode 100, and you're saying, well, I still didn't get my vaccine. I did have a few topics that would help you out and get you together just so you can be okay with getting a strategy around your exit. Check it out. So what do you need to do to move on? It's time to make a change. And the first thing you can do to make sure it's not just this vaccine issue is take an inventory. Take an inventory of things that you like, things that you dislike in your job, and just make a list, a running list, so you can start to understand the things that you do like about your job and the things that you don't like about your job. Because the things that you don't like, you want to try to remove in this next version. So take that inventory and and really think about it and write down all of the things, even if it is something that may be a part of your regular clinical job, like note taking or, or, or writing policy. Number two, look to your heart. What has been your passion? What has been your purpose? Did this job that you're no longer happy with, did it match up with some of those things? Think of the things that drive you. And this can be ways you volunteer. Your outlets, maybe the way you try to relax. This could be the way you spend your money to charitable organizations. It could be all of these things. So take a look at your heart. Listen to it. Listen to it because it's going to guide you. And, And when you're not listening to it, then you're just forcing yourself down the wrong path. This is why we want to restart. Number three. Don't forget your long term goals because your short term goal may just be get a new job or may just to be avoid the the vaccine or may just to be uh, to get a new start on life. But don't put yourself in that same position that you just left. Look at your long term goals and, and what does it look like 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now? What are you going to do as you head to retirement? What is your lifestyle going to be? Think about those long term goals, because if you can find something that matches up with your long term goals in the interim and that short term, you're going to be winning. Well, now this brings us to the third most popular episode of 2021, and that is the I Quit episode 2021, the Great Resignation, where we are talking about the Great Resignation in healthcare and how so many doctors, nurses, executives have just had enough. And I don't blame you. It's been tough out there the last couple of years in this pandemic. It is certainly something that you should consider if you're not in the happy place. And in fact, I give some advice right here where you can kind of get yourself into maybe a happier position in your current job so that you don't have to quit. Take a listen. There's some things before that moment that you should consider even before you quit, because a lot of people quit prematurely. And when they quit prematurely, they end up getting themselves in an area where they can't exactly know where to go next. They, they don't They kind of quit and say, well, I can get another job doing the same thing at another hospital. And what does that do? It ends up making a disaster out of your life because you go through all of this energy to transfer to a new job and things are great. The first three months you feel refreshed, you feel renewed, and then things get back to same old, same old because you really were just moving location without really analyzing the problem. So first, of course, analyze the problem because a lot of people are doing the wrong job. They're on the wrong seat on the bus and that's okay. You have to find your way to the right thing that gets you doing the right things. And the first thing on that quitting sequence is really ask for what you need. Again, We're in a system in where if you're doing a good job, the expectation is you'll be taken care of. But that's not always the case because people who may supervise you, people who may be in the C-suite, their goals and objectives are a little different. And so if things seem to be going relatively okay in your area, then there's not going to be a stink. And well, it's the job they feel that you've been hired to do. So you're just doing what you're being paid to do. 
However, there may be some things about your job that you don't like or you think you could change. And well, the first thing before you just go to writing that 30 day notice or that 60 day notice or whatever day notice is in your contract, ask for what you need. Sometimes that may be more pay. You haven't had a salary adjustment in a while. Sometimes that may be you need to work at a more regular location and you don't need to be running around. Maybe you don't need the evening hours or maybe you need more weekend hours or maybe you need something else with some small modification you can actually get. And someone will say, hey, you've given me a pretty good argument. You're a great worker. We'd hate to lose you. And if this can keep you here, we'll be willing to give you that. And so the pay may cost a little bit. Uh, maybe if you, you, you fall behind in your charts a lot, maybe asking for a scribe could be something. There are things that can help you find more enjoyment and more pleasure in your current job. And if you have identified your needs, ask for it. Simply ask for it. That's all you have to do. Well, number two on the list is about the stress-free MD. And stress must have hit a nerve with a lot of you guys because obviously you're listening to it and how to relieve your stress. And we sat down in this episode with Dr. Robin Tiger, the stress-free MD, who gave us some tips on what we can do to reduce the stresses in our lives. Check it out. Besides affirmations and working with mindset, which I know you work a lot with, it's working with our physiology. And we can do that because we can go back to learning how to put that brake pedal on, working on how to initiate that relaxation response. And so we're taught a ton of anatomy and physiology in medical school, but we're not taught that we can actually control some of it, a lot of it. So one way to do that is to work with your breath. And the breath is super cool. Like no one tells you your breath can do four things. It calms you down. It energizes you. It heats you up and it cools you off. Your breath does four things. Anybody know that? (laughs) I never knew that. (laughs) So for for, for the purpose of stress, we work mostly with the calming and cooling, right? And the reason that works from a physiology standpoint, if you like to geek out in physiology, is because the exhale, the part of your breath when you breathe out, controls decreasing your heart rate. So when someone says to you, hey, just take a deep breath, Dr. Derek, just take a deep breath. Well, what's going to happen? All this air is like stuck up in your chest and that's where we breathe in a stressful way. So we want to lengthen our exhale as long as possible because that brings our heart rate down, that brings our blood pressure down, and that makes us feel calmer. And we also want to breathe low into our belly Because there's a very important nerve called the vagus nerve that's down low in our belly, starts in our our head and travels all the way down into our bellies. And when we do that, we breathe lower into our bodies. We initiate that vagal tone, that vagus nerve, which puts that break on. So two ways with your breath to calm yourself down is to lengthen your exhale and to breathe more deeply into your body. Man, just listening to her helps me to exhale, manage my stress, and a simple breathing exercise can do so much for you. So she gave us lots more tips in episode 92, Becoming the Stress-Free MD with Dr. Robin Tiger. So make sure you're keeping your stress in check this year. Well, we get to the most listened to episode of 2021, and it takes us all the way back to episode 74, Practice Does Not make you perfect. And in this episode, we talk about, although we often say it and we often look for it and we say to practice, practice, practice and become an expert, you need to have 10,000 hours of practicing your craft before you're considered an expert, so on and so forth. And well, one thing tends to get in the way. Check it out. Today, we're talking about perfection and perfection is something that many of us high achievers strive for. Let's put it that way. Oftentimes we're told from a very young age, practice makes perfect. Oh, you should practice your saxophone. You should practice your cello. Go practice the piano. Go practice for your soccer team. Go practice basketball. And we are told, well, why should I practice? Well, practice makes perfect. And 
with lots of training, you sometimes think that, well, perfection is what I need to be setting as my goal. And I'm here to tell you that perfection is not always what you need. And most of the time, it's not even what you want. So let's think about how perfection gets in our way and helps us really and keeps us from making our goals. Let's look at this from the beginning. Now, we talk about setting very high and lofty goals. I often advise my clients to make lofty goals, to think beyond what you think is possible. And and a lot of times we want to do that. And sometimes we set these goals out there for ourselves and we said, all right, this is the perfect goal and I want to execute it perfectly. And I am ready to get this thing rolling. And what happens? Well, with all good intentions, perfection is your goal, you're thinking, all right, well, I've got to get the perfect plan. So let's start planning this. And you work on the plan, you work on the plan, you work on the plan. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, just like the little engine that could. And, you know, months, weeks, years later, you have the perfect plan now. Now you're ready to go, but you've wasted all of this time getting wrapped up in perfection. When perfection is maybe not exactly what you need. And when you have these high and lofty goals, well, guess what? They don't always come to fruition. They don't always go through the way you had planned it. And when you do that, then what happens? You say, oh, I didn't quite get to my goal or it didn't happen like I wanted to. Or I didn't even come close because I never got started. I kept planning and planning and planning. So beware of perfection. Thank you. So beware of perfection. Perfection will hinder you. It'll keep you back from your goals. And although you want to achieve perfection many times, you can be near perfect and be just fine. Well, that wraps up the top five episodes of 2021. I'd like to spend a moment to thank all the listeners, because if nobody listened to this show, I wouldn't do it anymore. And I know you guys are writing in, you're saying some of the content is valuable. It's made you think about things differently. Some of you guys have even reposted and continue to send in your questions or your topics that you want me to address in the new year in 2022, because I'll be happy to do all of that. Simply reach out to me. You can reach out to me through email give me a call, go to my website at drjarrett.com or hit me up on social media anywhere at Dr. Jarrett, spell out the word doctor, J-A-2-R-E-1-T, and we will hook it up for you. I mean, that's what this is about. We're bringing some things that are of interest to you. There's some things that you, you want to hear about or even just want to know what I'm thinking about or some of my guests, as you heard from many this year. Uh, But we're going to keep this show going. And I thank you for listening. I urge you to tell a friend, have them start listening. And with our community, we will achieve. Well, now you guys are like, okay, this certainly was far from the best episode of all time. It, It certainly did not leave up to live up to the billboard that we have out in, in front saying the greatest episode of all time. Uh, but it was a pretty good episode because you got top five of the biggest episodes of 2021. Now you're asking, okay, well, what would be some of the top of all time episodes? Well, I did go back and look at all of the episodes that we had starting back in 2018. And there were three that, that came to, to mind. It was the, uh, COVID pandemic ranked in as, as number, uh, Actually, that was number one. Sorry. So lots of people were looking at the toolkit that uh, we put out in 2019 and a lot of the ongoing changes at the early stage of the COVID pandemic. And that was that was a big one. Uh, We also had quite a bit of listens on uh, Queen Cat. And when Queen Cat was doing something that she actually uh had an episode she's a surgeon and she is a rap artist and a dancer and she doesn't practice medicine anymore she actually does what she wants to do because making music is her love so a lot of people resonated to her episode uh the thing that that stood out in that episode the most to me was simply we recorded it at 3 a.m 
Pacific time. And uh, I'm on the East Coast, as you guys know. She's on the West Coast. But she's like, hey, I'm I'm getting this thing going at, at six in the morning. And I said, are you sure this is the right time for your time zone? And she was like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's just how I roll. I'm, I mean, I'm that's my creative energy time. And I said, all right, well, I'm up that early and let's let's roll with it. So shout out to Queen Cat. And then finally, one of the biggest episodes of all time was the Do No Harm episode, where we talked with filmmaker Robin Simon about her documentary, Do No Harm, in uh, really in, in their documentation of the suicide epidemic, which still is going on and we haven't made headway despite getting more awareness. So I'm glad that remains to be a popular episode because we really need to do a better job of taking care of each other. Well, I, again, would like to thank all of you guys for listening. It has been a wonderful journey to come with you this far, getting 100 episodes in. I can't believe it myself. My uh, producer told me, uh, do you know how close you are to 100 episodes? I'm <laughs> somewhere when I was in the late 80s, and it really gave me the motivation to start churning out the content. And your response has been great. So thank you for all of that. And just keep reaching out to me. And remember, Firestarters, if you or anyone you know has been dissed, disengaged, dissatisfied, disgruntled, disenfranchised with their career, please invite them to join us along this journey. Simply go to your favorite podcast player and subscribe to Licensed to Live. And while you're there, please rate this episode and give me honest feedback so that I may provide you with the most up-to-date information about career challenges and life changes. And in between episodes, you guys know I'm hanging out on LinkedIn. Find me there, connect with me there, and continue to engage with me there. We're having fun. Until then, see you next time. No matter how disheartening the moment of accusation sounds, how deep the pain of immobilization stabs, or how bleak your future looks, no one can take away your license to live. Keep Dr. Jarrett's expertise handy and unlock your future. Go to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or another podcast player and subscribe right now to Licensed to Live. See you next time.